So we're in the kind of Korg bubble, which is a really strange uh, inflatable kind of booth, I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is Etienne, uh, who uh, the lead engineer at Korg? Uh, I'm a software engineer. I work in the analog team. Uh, so on the prologues, uh, well, on the log series and the Volkas. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. so you're like we're, we're right at source now. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I worked on the operating system for the prologue. I did the multi-engine. Uh, I did the uh, the DSP for the effects section, and everything related to the SDK is also what I do. Which is why we're here, because yeah. we've heard that there's the the, the the prologue board, which is an interesting concept. So this is it. What, what is its purpose? Tell, tell okay, us a so bit. the board is a very limited edition just for Superbooth. Um, basically to, um, to just get the conversation started with developers about the SDK for the prologue and uh, just to get people started in making some content for the prologue without necessarily having to buy a prologue to run their code. Just a, a first step in that direction. Oh, that's right, because you open sourced it, didn't you? Is um, that, not open sourced, but okay, opened it up. Yeah, the, the platform is open in the sense that you can write custom oscillators, can write custom modulation effects, custom delays, custom reverbs to complement what's on the prologue. So it's the digital side? The, on the digital side, yes. Interesting. What, what, what's your think? What, I mean, it seems very uh, unusual for a yes, company yeah, of, of, of Korg size, you know, to, to open up like this. I mean, what's, what's the thinking behind yeah. it? Well, I joined Korg recently. Personally, I've, I have an interest in open platforms like this. I, I like to tinker with things. Uh, in, in, in the analog team, I mean, we have a, a history of uh, hackability in all the products that we do. Yeah, you put the points in on the PCB. Exactly. So stuff, the Volkas, yeah. there is a lot of points to do to have some fun with the with the hardware. Uh, in this case, I mean, it's a pretty complex piece of hardware. Uh, but we had we have a new uh, digital infrastructure around the analog uh, circuitry, which had potential for a bit of hackability. And so uh, you were saying, I mean, what is the what is the kind of potential? How much, how far can people go with this board? Okay. Well, um, basically. Uh, so the content has to be written in actual C code. Right. So you're writing oscillators from actually zero uh, in, in raw code. And, but uh, there's four runtimes in there, which are very focused. Um, so you can write code for the, 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 digit, the, the multi-engine, where you focus on writing a single oscillator. So it's a very isolated piece of code. Uh, you just focus on, on generating a waveform. And uh, your code will be uh, automatically dispatched to all of the voices and you'll get automatically pol like full polyphony. Uh, you don't have to worry about any of this in your code. You just, you just focus the on the waveform. Um, yeah. And what, I mean, what sort of capabilities are there? I mean, obviously, you know, how crazy could people go? Or is that something oh, well, you don't know yet? I but, you know, here at Superboot, I mean, lots of people are doing pretty crazy things with, uh, with, with uh, you know, generating sounds. Uh, there's a lot of people doing things with additive synthesis, uh, a lot of spectral manipulation. Uh, you, you can, and it's, it's about adding, like, you know, personal flavors even to, like, classic techniques. Um, so just to bring like some some identity to. And is there is there, is there some kind of crossover between the analog and the digital side? Can you can you feed some of what your analog engine is doing into the digital side to kind of then um, post process? Yeah, you, from from the oscillator's perspective, you can't really do that. Uh, but uh, basically, on the prolog, you have your VCOs just next to this digital engine, uh, and they complement each other by enriching. Uh, so the digital side actually brings some edge to the analog side uh, and, and creates a very specific balance there. Um, but, you know, you have the digital section of, of the effects so where you can bring very up. digital style effects on there uh, to process the analog sound. So you, you get this complement. Uh, yeah, this complement. So in terms of how, the, you know, if somebody say is maybe uh, casual, you know, not a professional coder, yeah. but, you know, knows how to code some basic things up. What use would this board be to them? Can they actually, Okay. So uh, how does it run? What, is the, what, what comes out? Yeah, what's on this board is, a, is actually the main, the main CPU of the prologue, where the effects processing is happening, and a, a single chip uh, of the voice boards. So this chip here is the microcontroller where the multi-engine is running, and there's 16 of those in the Prolog 16. So you get a voice. You get a voice of the multi-engine. So uh, so it, it can be a nice little sandbox to try out writing oscillators, because the code to write an oscillator is very self-contained. You don't have to worry about any of the things of writing embedded software, usually. 
you can just write the oscillator. So I, I suppose what I'm getting at is if I wrote myself an oscillator, I thought, could I make that into a kind of single voice oscillator, a synthesizer? By having, is there an audio output? Is oh, yeah, yes. Input? Yeah, there, there's an audio output here. So yes, this could be used as a little mono synthesizer. Uh, and it's, it also has an audio input so that you can test effects independently from the oscillator too. Uh, and everything is controlled via USB MIDI. So all of the panel parameters of the prologue are mapped via MIDI on this board. You ah, can control so them. I, I, so, and how are you making this available? Because I mean, you say it's a limited edition, but I can see people going, you know, I fancy doing a bit of well, hacking. Well, you know, for now, that's really just a limited edition uh, to get people excited. And, and, uh, and if there's interest, we'll, we'll, we'll think about maybe making it more available. And what happens if somebody comes up with a great piece of code? I mean, is the, is the idea for them then to come and talk to you and go, look what I've done, and yeah. you go, hey, well, you put it in a central repository or a library? Yes, or is it? so we're not really planning to have a community management or a store where you upload and monetize and these things, but definitely we want to bring uh, official content from Korg, uh, maybe through co collaborations with third-party companies or independent developers. So it's almost like a coding A&R uh, uh, machine where people can show yeah. you their chops and you could, it's like, a, it could, well, not a job interview, but a collaboration interview. Yeah, maybe. yeah, and, and we're look, definitely looking forward for collaborations on that side, but also people have the freedom to exchange the code that they're making or sell it also. Um, the, the SDK itself doesn't put uh, restrictions on the code that you're, that you're making. You can distribute it as closed source or open source as you want. Oh, so if, so if I made, for instance, uh, a great uh, oscillator source, and I said to it, I, I wanted to make it available to the community. Can they, how do they get it into their prologue then? Does it have to okay. be via you or is it via uh, some kind Okay, of so, so um, the prologue uh, next month will have a firmware upgrade which will open up the SDK functionalities. And at the same time, we'll release also the librarian application to manage the programs in the prologue. But in that librarian application, there will be also additional functionalities to load the code into the different sections uh, of the prologue. And uh, so users only need that application to load code. And um, code that is, has been developed by a third party developer, an independent developer, can be loaded through that application. Ah, okay. So they won't have to distribute through us to get to. But I guess, I guess that also makes, makes it sort of why you would just go, it's just the oscillator, because otherwise they might load something in that broke everything. You know, you keep yeah. it quite. Yeah, right. of course. Right. So it's it's relatively, you know. Uh, and in terms of the actual DSP processing, how yeah. much juice is there in that? And we've got uh, reverbs and delays and choruses in. Yes. So. In there. So what will it do? You know, how crazy could I go if I was a creative programmer? Uh, well, it, it also depends on your skill level. It was yes, very interesting in the past few days talking to different types of developers, some finding it very restrictive, others finding it uh, very, very powerful, depending on how, how, what's your habits as a developer, what kind of platform you're developing on. So the main CPU is a 180 megahertz chip. Of course, there's a lot of other processing happening on the chip, so you don't get the full processing power. Uh, but um, but I, we do have... Um, you know, effects happening in parallel, modulation effects and, and reverbs happening in parallel, so you get quite a so lot of So they could juice. be ruined to write kind of modulated, modularized uh, effects algorithms that would, would, would kind of, you could have multiple algorithms running in the same uh, memory space if you were efficient coder. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And is there any memory that for, for kind of... Uh, I don't yes, know. okay, the, the memory requirements are different depending on the, on the part that we're think, talking about. Uh, so the, uh, on the multi-engine side, uh, the, the oscillator code has to fit in 32 kilobytes. Wow, That's, old, old school. Yeah, old school. But at the same time, you don't have to worry about so much. You only focus on a single oscillator and nothing else. Uh, there's a whole system in place to take care of every, every event and all these things. So. Um, uh, on the effects side, uh, you have access to some buffers in the SD RAM for your delay lines. So for uh, for delay effects and reverb effects, you get two megabytes of SD RAM uh, for your delay lines. That's, so that's which is which is you know, really reasonable, yeah. And what about um, uh, access to kind of controlling parameters of the oscillator? Is there, you know, are, are there kind of control buses, or is that all up to you on how you code it? Um, well. On the prologue, on the panel, you have a shape knob, which is used on the VCOs to uh, do some wave shaping. So there's one on the, on the multi-engine too. Uh, this parameter is available from your code, so you can tweak parameters using that So you can uh, map knob, it to multiple things. To whatever you want. Uh, there's also, uh, this same knob can be used with the shift button to be used as a second parameter. 
Uh, also, you can expose up to six parameters inside the menu. So through the OLED screen, you can go and edit uh, up to six parameters. Okay, so it's only six, uh, uh, and that's that's a limitation that we've put in uh, willing uh, on purpose because uh, we didn't want people to start building sense within sense. It's meant to be an oscillator, yeah. so uh, don't, they don't, will. I'm sure they will. They will. They will. <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, uh, we we try to keep the prologue very straightforward and and things to be easy to understand and and and, and direct to control. So we wanted to keep those oscillators as oscillators as much as possible. Excellent. Thank, um, so uh, availability. Is it, uh, how much does it cost? That sort of stuff. Um, so the board is not a product yet. It's really just super boot limited edition that I've been giving to people that came for technical sessions here. Ah, uh, okay. And uh, so we'll see afterwards what we do if we if we make boards depending on enthusiasm. And uh, how much you want to manage the, uh, the I guess the, the, the uh, going through the code and listening to yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but for the SDK itself, uh, in the coming weeks, I will put uh, the SDK, the beta version of the SDK, for developers to look at and and see what's possible to do with the SDK. And uh, in June, there will be the firmware upgrade for the Prologue that will unlock uh, these capabilities in the in the main system of the Prologue. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, thank you.